Hi guys, I'm finally on my abandoned railway line. It's there stretching behind me and there ahead of me, you can see the dogs going down the track. It's lovely, it's cool, it's shaded. There's no wind at all, it's dead calm in here. I think if there is some wind, no, the trees aren't moving, so there's no wind here. It's gonna get really hot and sticky today, I think. Go on, off you go, guys. Right, let's talk about something to talk about, guys. Bicycles. Go on guys, off you go. When I was a little child, I can remember being taught how to ride a bike. And once I got my bike, I was away. <laughs> I rode everywhere, guys. I lived in a little village in Cambridgeshire. And I got this bike and I'd cycle miles. I actually cycled, the furthest I can remember cycling was, uh, don't forget I'm only a tiny tot, I was between the age of five and 11. And I cycled all the way to Newmarket, which was about seven miles away. I didn't tell my parents, <laughs> but I cycled all the way to Newmarket, turned around and came back to our little village again. So 14 miles round trip. As a, I don't know how old I'd have been then. I'd have probably been about seven or eight when I did that on my push bike. <laughs> if my parents had found out, they'd have gone daft. <laughs> um, I, when I uh, was at school, I got a paper round and I used to do paper rounds in the morning. I used to get up at six, get down to the shop at seven, well, before seven. You, you weren't allowed to start your newspaper round until seven o'clock, but I used to get down there early. So you could, uh, you could pick your own round. You had like a book and you pick the papers out and put them in order into your sack so that when you went on your rounds, the top paper was the right one for that address. You, d you did write a number on the top of it, but you, you had them all set out in a book so you knew how to pick pick your paper so you'd pick a, a daily mirror or a sun or a, 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 a financial times you'd put them in that order and then deliver them to that particular address and I did that for two or three years really good I enjoyed that um, getting up early and that's where I get the getting up early in the morning from I think it was just such a pleasant start to the day I'd be up at six I'd be down the paper shop probably about half past six quarter to seven and then you weren't allowed to leave the paper shop until seven o'clock. Uh, that was the law. You weren't allowed to start working until seven o'clock. So we all had our bags ready, bikes outside the shop waiting. And as soon as it was seven o'clock, um, the shop manager, his name was Mr. Fairhead. So I don't know if anybody remembers Mr. Fairhead, but he used to say, okay, boys, off you go. <laughs> and we all used to go out the door with our bags, put them on the back of our push bikes and off we'd go. And yes, that was lovely. I think I got the grain. I think when I left, by the time I left, I think I was getting about five pound a week. Um, but that was lovely, yeah. Proper money back then. <laughs> um, yeah. I also used to help a milkman. That happened one morning when I was doing my newspaper round. I bumped into this a milkman I used to pass every morning doing my paper round. And he caught me one morning. He said, oh, you said, you can't do me a favor, can you? He said, what are you doing after you finish your paper round? I said, well, just going home. He said, do you fancy earning a bit of extra money and giving me a hand? He said, because I need to finish early today. He said, and I, I really need somebody to help me. And I said, yeah, all right. <laughs> he said, I'll pay you. I said, all right. So I um, finished my paper round and I found him. I went back the way he'd gone and I found him. And I worked with him for the rest of the day, or rest of the morning, not the rest of the day. And he gave me, don't forget I'm on the newspaper round and I'm earning five pound a week and I helped him this particular day he gave me ten pounds and that was like wow <laughs> for me that was a lot of money the schoolboy, and suddenly I've got uh, five pound from my paper round and ten pound from the milkman for helping him and I helped him a few times after that uh, when he needed to help he'd ask me again uh, so that was really nice um, I'm trying to think of the fella's name and he lived just down the road from me and I ran into all well, I ran into he I helped him later on when I was a motor mechanic do a job on his car. I'm trying to think of his name. Hang on guys, I've just got a stone in my shoe, guys. Uh, I've got my, oh, ah. sorry guys. <laughs> Let me hold the actual camera. I'm trying to shape my shoe to get the, I've got a stone in there. Hang on guys. I might have to take the shoe off for this one. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's a tree up here. I'll, I'll stop at the tree. I can take my shoe off and I can lean on the tree, guys. Ow. It's gone right underneath my heel and I can't get it out. Go on then, guys, off you go. Yes, what's this? Middle ditch. 
Mr. Middle Ditch. <laughs> Ow, I've got to stop now. It's no good. Hang on, guys. The stone's gone right under my heel and it's really hurting. Oh. Right, I think it's gone. Oh, that's better. I don't know what it was, it felt like a stone. Right, yes, Mr. Middle Ditch, that's his name. And he was a milkman and he also did, go on, off you go, Snoop. He did um, funerals, he worked for the co-op funeral parlour. Go on, off you go, as a, uh, a, uh, a bearer carrying the coffin. Uh, he's a lovely fella. Oh, I should imagine he's long gone now, but he's a lovely fella. And he lived just down the road from where I lived. And he came and knocked on my door one weekend and he said, you couldn't give us me a hand, could you? I said, what are you up to? He said, I'm changing the engine on my car. He said, I've got a new engine. He said, but I need to get the old one out. He said, and the new engine is coming tomorrow and I'll pop it back in. And I said, yes, okay. So I go down uh, after dinner and he's got the bonnet off his car laying on the front garden. Everything's unbolted, it's just ready to pick, pick out. And I said to him, where's the crane then? He said, oh, we don't need a crane, we can do it between us, he said. Look at me, guys. There's no way I can lift an engine out of an engine compartment. They are really heavy, I mean silly heavy. This is a cast engine, it's not an aluminium engine. This is cast iron. And I said to him, we won't be able to pick that up, that's too heavy. He said, we can do that. <laughs> and he had this big rope, he wrapped this rope around the engine and we pulled the engine forward off the gearbox and then we got it up as far as the, what they call the slam panel. It's the top, it's the front of the car where the bonnet locks down to. That's called the slam panel. So we got the engine up that far and then he said, hang on, I'll do this bit. And he gathers all the ropes up that we've got and he holds them in like a knot above the top of the engine and he picks the engine up off the slam panel and puts it on his, um, puts it on his front garden. And I was, mouth was open because I know how heavy this thing is. And I said, are you all right? He said, yeah, it was a, wasn't a problem, easy. <laughs> so, fair enough. <laughs> so I wasn't really looking forward to the next day when we were going to be putting the proper engine in. I was I dreading it quite honestly. <laughs> anyway, uh, about eight o'clock that evening, there's a knock at the door and it's this fella's wife, <laughs> Mrs. Middleditch. She goes, oh, she said, um, my husband's hurt his back. <laughs> she said, uh, he can't do that job tomorrow. She said, uh, he'll let you know when he's ready to put the engine back in. And I thought, yeah, I know how he hurt his back. And he was, he was off work for about a week. <laughs> so he, he did, did bugger himself up big time. Uh, and when we put the engine back in, we had an engine crane. <laughs> yeah, he learned his lesson there. Yeah, not something to the, you have to look after your back guys. <laughs> Don't, don't push it, because uh, a back injury is awful, absolutely awful. Right, I'm going to sign out, guys. I shall speak to you later. Bye-bye.